And this week our lesson deals with some applications of com combinations um, and um, we will show you some of those to, uh, in these lesson videos and then you will have some problems that will extend them even further. Um, the first one deals with Pascal's triangle. If you don't know what Pascal's triangle, this is Pascal's triangle. And what you notice everywhere, the two numbers above a number add up to that number. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3. So for instance here, uh, 15 comes because 5 plus 15 equal, or 5 plus 10 equals 15. 10 plus 10 um, equals 20. And that in and of itself is an interesting thing. Uh, Pascal's triangle has lots of uses. Um, but what we know about Pascal's triangle is that it's related to combinations. So for instance, if we take this row, okay, we're going to call this row 4. We call it row 4 because um, uh, that, that is the, you know, they all start with 1s and then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 um, across. And when we do, when we talk about Pascal's triangle, if you notice, row 4 actually has 5 entries. So we're going to call this first entry out here the 0 entry. So the 4 would be the first entry, the 6 would be the second, the other 4 would be the third entry, the other would be the, uh, the last would be the fourth entry. And what we can show is that if we look at, for instance, 4, choose 2. Well, 4 choose 2, remember, is just 4 times 3 over 2 times 1, which gives you 12 over 2, which is 6. And so on Pascal's triangle, the 6 matches up with this, and the 6 is the 4th row, entry 2. 4th row, entry 2. And if you notice, there is symmetry in the Pascal's triangle. And that symmetry leads us to a very important thing about combina combinations, which is... Um, so, for instance, if I want to know this right here, that's the sixth row, the first entry. Six choose one is the same as, well, you see how these two are the same? Six choose, well, that's this six right here is the fifth entry, so six choose five. And that's always the case with combinations, just like six choose two, which would be 15, is the same as six choose four. And what it is, is if the two numbers add up to be the number that you're um, choosing from, then they're the same. That tells us that, for instance, 20 choose 8 is the same as 20 choose 12. And that's because in the 20th row of the Pascal's triangle, the 8th entry is the same as the 12th entry. And that's because of the symmetry in the Pascal's triangle. So this Pascal's triangle is very, very valuable. Um, and you can do a lot of things with it. So, for instance, if I said, what is the third entry of the 10th row of the Pascal's Triangle? You could just do 10 choose 3, which would give you um, 10 times 9 times 8 over 3 times 2 times 1. 3 times 3 cancels, 2 times 2 cancels, and that gives you 120. I can show you that if I, if I erase some of this. right? I, I wanted the, if I'm looking at the 10th row, then this would be... Uh, 1, 7, 21, 35, 1, 8, uh, 28, 56, I'm going to have to do one more, 35, this would be 56 plus, um, 35 plus 35 is 70, 1, 9, 36, 84, 56 plus 170 is 126, and now I get to the row 10, that's going to give me so this is entry one, 0, entry 1, entry 2. So entry 3 is 36 plus 84, which is 120. And so whenever you're looking at the Pascal's triangle, if you want to know one of the numbers, you don't have to make the whole triangle. You can just use combinations to get there. The reason that is valuable, because that leads us to what's called the binomial theorem. And what the binomial theorem does um, is it's a way of expanding um, a binomial squared. So, for instance, you should know these, and, and, you know, x plus y squared is just x plus y times x plus y. And I'm not going to go through and show you how to multiply that. I'm just going to tell you what it is. x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. If I were to do x plus y cubed, it would be x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. Okay, and if you notice, there are two important things to notice about this. First, you notice the co coefficients. The coefficients are 1, 2, 1. We go back to the Pascal's triangle, row 2, coefficients 1, 2, 1. And if we then look at the next one, the coefficients are 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay, 1, 3, 3, 1, go back and look at the Pascal's triangle, 
the third row, right, row three is one, three, three, one. And so when you, the binomial theorem says that the coefficients of the expansion correspond with the Pascal's triangle. So for instance, right here, this tells us what row it is. And then we got to determine what entry it is. Well, we do that based upon the power of the first one. Because there's a pattern here. Look at this. This goes x squared. This goes x to the first, and then you add a y to the first, and then y squared. This one goes x cubed, so you start with the highest power of x, the next highest power of x, the next highest power of x, then finally no power of x. And you work in the opposite direction with the second term. So for instance, if we want to do x plus y to the six, and we want to know what that expansion is, we can use the, the um, binomial theorem. And then we can use the, use the Pascal, Pascal's triangle first, so 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. We'll just write that down, right? 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. So that's the um, coefficients of the sixth row of the Pascal's triangle. So if you were to multiply x plus y to the sixth out, you would get the first term is x to the sixth. The second term has coefficient 6, but you've got to do the first term, you reduce the power. The second term, the y, you add 1 to it x to the fifth y. Do you see how it's x to the fifth y to the first? You add those together, they equal sixth. The next one is 15, and now we're looking at x to the fourth y squared, right? Because you're reducing the power of x each time, you're increasing the power of y each time. Then 20, this is when they have the same. Then 15, now we're all the way down to x squared, but now we're moving up to y to the fourth. And then 6, x, y to the 5th. And then finally, you just have the y to the 6th. So if you notice, there's a very specific pattern about how this works. And when we're doing these, we can then you, you notice one other thing. This coefficient is the third entry of the 6th row. 6 choose 3. If you did 6 choose 3, three you'd get 20. If you did 6 choose 4, you'd get 20. If you did 6 choose 2, I mean 15. If you do 6 choose 2, you'd get 15. If you did 6 choose 5, you'd get 6. Or 6 choose 1, you'd get 6. So it allows us to find each one of these coefficients very easily. So for instance, we look at example 4. We want to do x plus 2 to the 5th. Well, um, this one's a little bit different. And that's because when I start doing it, I, I look at the... Um, I, I still got to use the Pascal's triangle. So if you go back to that page with the Pascal's triangle on it, Right, you got 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And so 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. That's the fifth row. So it's going to be x to the fifth, because the first term squared with a coefficient 1, plus 5, x to the fourth, reduce it by 1. But this time I don't have a y. So instead of having a y, I've got to put in a 2 to the first. And so I'm going to need to go through and simplify that in a second. The next term gives me coefficient 10, x to the third, and instead of y, I've got 2 squared. And then 10, right, we're at this term, right, x squared, 2 to the third, plus 5x times 2 to the fourth, and then the last one is just that 2 to the fifth. So when you're doing the binomial theorem, you don't have to use the, um, uh, you don't have to have variables to always do these. So now I just go through and simplify, so it's x to the fifth. 5 times 2 is 10, so 10x to the fourth. 10 times 4 is 40, so 40x to the third. 10 times 2 to the third is 8, so that's 80x squared. 5 times 16, that's 80x. And then 2 to the fifth is just 32. So the decimal expansion, or the expansion of x plus 2 to the fifth is x to the fifth plus 10x to the fourth plus 40x cubed plus 80x squared plus 80x plus 32. It should take you a really, really long time to try to do without the binomial theorem that we just did. And then example five, what is the coefficient of the x to the eighth term? Well, remember, x to the eighth is going to be x to the eighth, and then you've got to have here the rest of the, the powers, because this is a, a power of 12. And so I have to do negative 3 to the fourth. And so this one's going to be positive. Now, if I would have said like the x to the ninth term, then you'd have negative 3 to the third, which would give you a negative number. So whenever you have x minus 3 to some power, it's usually going to go a positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. So this is the, the exponents 
But I also have to think of the coefficient. The coefficient is just going to be 12, because that's what the power is, and then choose either one of these. Well, which one's going to be easier to choose? Choose 8 or choose 4? Well, hopefully you're thinking choose 4. So I need to do this times x to the 8th times negative 3 to the 4th. So 12 choose 4 is just going to be 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 over 4 times 3 times 2. 4 times 3 is 12, 2 is 5, and so that's going to give you 495. 11 times 5 times 9. Negative 3 to the 4th is just going to give you 81, x to the 8th, and so you're going to do uh, 495 times 81, and that's going to give you 40,000. 95 times x to the eighth. So that is the coefficient of the x to the eighth term, um, or the, the, the term x to the eighth in the, x, in the expansion of x minus 3 to the 12th. Would have taken you forever, and you'd had a huge piece of paper and lots and lots of places for mistakes if you tried to do that not using the binomial theorem. So that shows you how the Pascal's triangle, the binomial theorem, and combinations all relate to each other.